So remember how you've got all these video games where you're doing air races and you're flying through hoops and stuff in the sky, right? Well, obviously these are hoops on the ground, right? So what physics keeps these hoops in the sky? Well, I'll tell you what, what I have is a script that I wrote using Kerbal uh, RPC and if all things go well, these things should all fly into the air. They're all under control of my script. So they're all kind of hover. I, I haven't really got my PID stuff in order, but these things are all going to kind of float around and do their own thing. I mean, they're kind of floating independently, but they're kind of dancing through the sky. And then I've got a plane here. I've got a plane. Guess what I'm going to try and do with a plane. It will probably involve crashing into things. Uh, here we go. See? We actually have the physics figured out. So let's see how many of these I can fly through without crashing. Uh, let's go for the one near the tower first. For the- near the launch site. Yeah, good luck with that. Not only- let's be clear. Not only are they very kind of small, but they also tend to be moving up and down a bit. So let's see how far I can get. And I'm totally just guessing... Uh... Oh! Okay, well, I didn't mean to do that. But it's still flying, no harm done. <laughs> it's spinning, though! Could I have just made really tall rings? Yeah, I've done that before. That's the thing, I've done the tall rings before. I want to try flying rings, because flying rings are so much cooler. I mean, it was just an exercise in trying to write scripts that would coordinate multiple things. Okay. Well... Oh, <laughs> let's just try landing this thing. Okay, you know what? No, let's let's just keep going. I either fly or I die. You think I should do it in Ivy? No, I actually kind of like flying this way so I can see where I'm going. I mean, okay, this ring is not really in an orientation which is so healthy. Oh, wow. <laughs> Did I F5? No, but I can revert to revert to launch. So uh, F revert to launch is all I need because I then need to restart the script. That's the important part. I like the fact that I've actually managed to crash multiple times and these things are still floating around. Okay, that one I'm not going for, but I will go for this one here. Okay, here I go. This is really hard to figure out. Yes! Oh, be a beauty! Okay, uh, where'd that one go? Did it fall from the sky? Have I lost one already? I think I might have hit physics range or something. I thought I had the physics range set really high, but apparently it just vaporized. Well, so much for that. Oh, wait! No, it- wait! It moved over this way! That's- that's hilarious! Ah! Okay. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> That's, that's pretty hilarious. The rings are just floating around like jellyfish in the sky. There, so now you should be able to see the multi-hover script there that I, I wrote. It's really pretty simple, right? It's just... It just basically starts out by enumerating at the start. It basically says, for all the vessels that I can see, Find any that have ring in their name. Uh, do I know if there's any way to obtain b iron brew in the United States? Yes, there are stores that have it. So, uh, yeah, what else? So, it'll then basically go through, set up the engine, set up the throttle, and then when it's time for launch, it'll just go in and switch engine active. It can't actually activate staging, I discovered, because that throws an exception. Uh, and then it just like runs in a loop, loop every tenth of a second, it decides whether it wants to set the throttle to one or zero, and then the autopilot just has it kind of hold orientation. So, yeah, let's let's go and try this again. Give me one second, do 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 do, because I want to show you this. I want to show you that this is the beer that I picked up. It is called Gravity Check. Gravity Check, oh yes. Low gravity beer for high gravity people. Oh yeah. Figure out. 
Oh yes, that's number one. Right, now I gotta hunt down number two. In the rings in the sky. Where is this one? Okay, this one is, is rotating. Oh, I'm not quite in the correct, but I think... Oh yes! Okay, oh no, no! <laughs> I need to tune the roll. You know, it's all about my ailerons, because that's how I roll. Uh, there might be some singing based on something that I, I've been writing. But, you know, you may not want to hear that, so that may or may not be a bonus. Okay, so it, it kind of flies a little better like this. I'm going to throttle back, though, because I, I want to turn it. Okay, there we go. Actually, I think this might be a little too weak in terms of roll authority. Okay, here we go. Lined up. It might actually be easier from the cockpit, but... Oh, okay, that's number one. And I haven't crashed into the ground yet. Oh, wow, there's two of them. Do you think I can get one and then the other? Oh, look at this. They're lighting. Oh, no, no. They're lighting up. They're lighting up. I gotta get a twofer here. Gotta go for a twofer. Yes. And. Woohoo! <laughs> yes! Excellent! Woohoo! That is awesome! That is so awesome that that actually happened and I'm not- I have not been drinking. Look, this one's going sideways so I kinda have to match the- the traversal rate. I'm getting pretty good at this now. Now all we need to do is add some winds and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Well, so much for that. Uh, can I land this thing? Probably not. Okay, well that killed him. <laughs> okay, I'm not quite lined up, but I can get there. I I don't know if I can really do stationers, although I would love to spend a bit more time on uplink. How about uplink? It's really always very hard for me to come up with things. Okay. Okay, getting there, getting there. Yes! Woohoo! <laughs> Excellent. Now, I wonder if I can actually start this while flying. That is an interesting thing. Let's do this. F5. Let's see what'll happen here. Oh, you know what? Those things were supposed to stage first. Ah, oh, but it seems that a bunch of them actually went airborne. So that's a good sign. That's pretty cool. Uh, although I think these things got confused because... Oh, you know what happened is the active vessel changed. So these things lost... Uh, th those lost any control, whereas these things kept control. Okay, this is going to require a lot of conversa con like, conversation, a lot of concentration, which means very little in the way of conversation, due to the fact that I will be concentrating intensely on intensely concentrating fizzy stuff. I can't even make up, I can't even speak correctly. I'm making up words which have no actual meaning in the English language. Okay, this thing's flying. And north? North. No, I need to go north. Wow, this is insanely hard! Maybe I should come from, like, high up so I'm, like, aiming at a target from above. That might make more sense. I'm getting close. Yes! Woohoo! Woohoo! Yes! <laughs> is that not awesome, right? This is where I think that... <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank God for all that talk. <laughs> I just, I had to, the problem was that the nav ball was pointing me one way and the controls were reversed. I love the fact that this thing is just kind of moving along over the surface and I'm trying to figure out how to get to it. Oh, there it is, going underneath it. Let's just... <laughs> Let's just hammer it, right? Yes! Excellent! Second successful landing! <laughs> See, it was more than a fluke! That's two! Two times I managed that! Unfortunately, this is as wide as the jellyfish thing will get. It does look like it's all about the pain! Here comes the pain! Okay, let's see if it manages to make it into the air this time. Oh, yes! Look! We got it! <laughs> it's a self-hovering jellyfish. I'm pretty sure this thing is not going to survive. My three-year-old believes that all rocket ships are designed to explode. This thing is apparently having some issues with turning. It, it just can't seem to turn itself. Uh, okay. Well, that didn't work very well, did it? <laughs> and no, I think we're going to have the same issue, but I think part of the problem was that the uh, the gimbal, once it started to slip sideways, the gimbal forces would tend to make it worse. Okay. It's the flying spaghetti monster. It is starting to fall over, isn't it? We have... It, oh, there it is. That's it. Finally giving up the ghost. So what language does giving up the ghost come from? Because I want to know, because I've been using that expression for years. I could try using uh, reverse thrust as well, obviously. Oh, look at that! Oh, Nelly! <laughs> and I swear I don't have uh, I don't have the cheats turned on for like no damage. That was just you know, that was just what happens. Okay, here we go. There's picking up sideways velocity now. But I think I think it'll make it over. Oh, uh, maybe not. Maybe I should force it to go north just to make sure. There we go. I'm I'm manually steering it through this stuff. Which is kind of cool actually. I can still give it manual control inputs. Let's go and chase after the landor. I can always crash this thing when I, I'm done with it. I'm just curious about how it's going to handle the mountains that it's coming out. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it'll handle them just fine. It's a UFO! Look! Up in the trees! It's coming! Once again, still terrain following. I kind of like that. It, I like the way that it just is just chilling out there. So yeah, what I'm doing is I'm toggling the thrust reversers to make sure that I'm not approaching it too quickly. Which does actually... Are you talking about taking all your readings in your script? 
Um, no, this the script is really dumb. The script is really dumb at this time. It is just it's not even got a PID controller and it's just uh, turning the thruster on and off when it's trying to maintain a certain altitude. Look at us, we are but friends, brothers in the sky, together, working to chase down this mountain and show it who's boss. Uh-oh, I've lost my thrust reverser control here. But that's pretty cool, look, there we go. I see you there. Obviously keeping the undercarriage down because of the tendency for this thing to touch down on the ground. I notice we also having that graphics glitch where everything's starting to flash and flicker. I'm wondering if that's like something in my graphics drivers that has been updated at some point. Because we had that issue last week. Someone could make a chatterer pack using Navajo code talker recordings. That would be a reasonable facsimile of what a probe droid did. Oh, oops. Oh man, I did not mean to do that. It's still flying though! Oh yeah, badass probe. Excellent. <laughs> I did not mean to do that. Uh yes. This is this is me uh, chasing a drone down, obviously. There's a rogue drone operator out here somewhere. It's gonna have more thrust than me. Maybe I should just land it and follow the probe to see how far it goes, right? Okay, I'm gonna leave that there and go after the probe. Oh darn, it crashed. It eventually met its match. Basically, the handling that they were supposed to do to get it onto the side of the rocket resulted in the at the carbon fiber exterior being damaged and okay oh there we go there we go landing up on the side of the of the mountain Uh, come on, get the nose down here. Oops. Okay, never mind. Let's get out of here. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love doing that stuff. Does this count as VTOL? It's a VSTOL, technically, because that's a very short runway when you measure it in terms of ground distance covered. Thank you. Your time is appreciated, and I shall see you tomorrow. Fly safe.